everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to do a little deep dive into the Second Amendment, because I hear so many people that are in the gun community and the pro-Second Amendment community say, I don't know how to answer these questions. When antis come at me with these points, I really don't know how to counter them. Well, today I want to deal with a couple of the main points that antis always make, and I want to give you kind of a refresher course here on how to defend the Second Amendment in its actual true meaning, not this bastardized version that a lot of people on the left want to put forward. When you look at the argument from people on the left against the Second Amendment, well, it usually boils down to two different arguments, two main things. One, that the founders meant it only for the militia. That's why militia is mentioned in the amendment. It's just for the militia. Well, first, uh, we'll address that here in a minute. Uh, we'll talk about what the militia actually meant and whether the Founding Fathers actually meant that. Now, the second thing that they usually come up with is that the Founding Fathers never foresaw modern-day weapons, and they didn't intend for it to just be everybody carrying guns around that could commit crimes. That's dangerous. Modern weapons are so dangerous, and they never could have foresaw that. Uh, we'll discuss that because the Founding Fathers weren't stupid. They actually did know things would change. They'd seen things change in their timeline, in their lifetime, and they knew things were going to change in the future. So let's go about these uh, one topic at a time here, these two main topics of uh, debate on the Second Amendment. First off, that the founders intended the Second Amendment only for the militia. Well, that's true and not true. Uh, because not uh, only did they see everybody as the militia, but they also saw uses for firearms outside of any type of military exercise. And we will talk about why that's so using the words of the founders here to prove that. First off, the collective right of the people is not something you find in the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is individual rights. It's not... For a group of people, it's for each individual person. So when they said that the militia being necessary for a free state, and I'm paraphrasing here, the right of the people shall not be infringed, they didn't say the right of the militia shall not be infringed. They said the right of the people, the individual, you, me. If they had meant it to be just the militia, they would have said, since a, a militia is necessary, the rights of any Militia member who is engaged in militia service shall not be infringed. Or the rights of every eligible militia member shall not be infringed. They didn't write it that way. They said the right of the, the, the people shall not be infringed. If I was going to say, uh, like if I'm a proponent of light rail, let's say. Let's talk about what that, uh, you know, because of the militia part of the Second Amendment. Uh, if I was a light rail advocate. And I said, hey, people got to get to work. That's a reason why light rail should be a staple in any large city, should be part of your foundation. That doesn't mean I think light rail is only for people that need to get to work. If I thought that, I'd say, hey, we need to build a system that allows employed people to travel to and from their workplace. I didn't phrase it like that. I said, because people need to get to work, light rail is a very important part of any city's uh, internal structure. That doesn't mean I don't think kids can't ride light rail to go to school. People can't use light rail to go shopping. That would be understood. I was just using an example to preface my actual belief. Not the only example, just an example. Maybe what I consider to be the most important example. And, you know, that whole part about the militia, before that comma... It's just like me saying, because people got to get to work, light rail is very important. Doesn't under uh, uh, score just people going to work. It just, like I said, it underscores them, but it doesn't make them exclusive. It allows other things too. It kind of implies that I know it's going to be used for other things also. At least allows that to be read. If I wanted to say different, I would have said different. Just like the founders would have said, militia members shall be afforded the right to bear arms without interference from the government if that's what they meant. They weren't stupid. But uh, let's talk about what they thought the militia was. Uh, let's look at here a quote from uh, Richard Henry Lee. It says, 
addressing who is the militia. A militia, when properly formed, are in fact the people themselves, dot, 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 all men capable of bearing arms. So right there, militia is not a certain group. It's not an organization. It's nothing. It's the people. When they say militia, they mean the armed people. That's pretty much all they mean. Uh, and let's also look at another quote from Richard Henry Lee. To preserve liberty, it is essential that the whole body of the people always possess arms and be taught alike, especially when young, how to use them. That's not a specific group of people, people that are only involved in this militia. It's every person. He says every person should be taught from the time they are young. Young people are not involved in the militia. So it'd be kind of hard to say that he only means people that are involved in the, this regulatory uh, organized body. And let's also remember that back in the day when the, the uh, Constitution was written, well-regulated didn't mean anything like what they try to interpret as today. Well-regulated just meant it can work. People can come together and do it. A well-regulated machine meant it was a machine that still functioned. You know, it had been taken care of and it still worked. Uh, a well-regulated process is a process that just worked. It didn't mean that it had a lot of outside people uh, deciding how it's done. It just meant it worked. That's all well-regulated meant. Functional. So a functional militia. Uh, abil the ability of the people to come together and form a militia. That's all well-regulated means. Uh, now, uh, a lot of people, like I say, like I said, they still want to say, well, it's just for people that are doing the militia. No, here's another statement right here from Samuel Adams. It says, the Constitution shall never be construed to prevent the people of the United States, who are pe uh, peaceful citizens, from owning arms. Meaning, there's no you should not try to interpret the Second Amendment to in any way deny any person rights. Just like I was saying earlier when I said it's important for workers to be able to use light rail. I'm not excluding others. And anyone who read what I said wouldn't say, well, that means kids can't ride light rail to work or to school and people can't use light rail just to go shopping. They have to be going to work. No, no one with any brain would be able to make that sentence mean that. And no one should use that uh, to make the try to con should try to make the Constitution mean that, according to Samuel Adams. Thomas Jefferson, no free man shall ever be debarred the use of arms. Not militia member, not anything else like that, just man. And I'm going to take man to mean men and women. Now, at the time, it pretty much didn't. It just meant men. So we can do that if people today wanted to make an argument that from the original intent of the Constitution, uh, men just meant men. Women don't have those rights. You could try to make that argument. But then you would see later that there are amendments to the Constitution that give women the same rights or minorities the same rights. So therefore, the constitutional uh, meaning of that word was changed through amendment. Second Amendment hasn't been changed uh, through amendment, period. Hasn't been uh, altered in any way. So it is still in its original text, in its original meaning. So if you want to form a, a committee and get a constitutional amendment regarding the second, well, that'd be one thing. But until that happens, you read the constitutional amendment as it's written. So uh, all those things right there show they didn't mean any organized body. They just meant the people, any free citizen. It's very clear. So that whole argument about the militia, that was just a statement, an example of their reasoning. And that was very broad because they thought the, a well-regulated militia meant just everyday persons, every person who can come together and hold a rifle or throw a grenade, or launch a bomb, or whatever, because they had weapons that a lot of people don't seem to think they had. They had uh, automatic firing weapons, you know, multiple firing weapons. They had Gatlin guns type things. They had bombs. They had mortars. They had all kinds of weapons, and they knew things were going to advance. 
Uh, because uh, if you deal with the second part of uh, anti-gunners argument, and I know this has been long and rambly today, and I hope everybody can keep up with me. If you deal with the, uh, or not keep up with me, just tolerate me, I guess would be the word. If you deal with the whole idea that they never foresaw today's weapons and they never thought that the, we'd have as big a risk today as we have, and if they knew it was just everyday people getting hurt by guns, they would want to put regulations on it. That's bullshit too, and it's very easy to see from the arguments of the Founding Fathers. In fact, as far as uh, danger, is it becoming a danger to people that people own guns because, oh, now they got these efficient guns and blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's look at what they thought about danger. Uh, if you look at Thomas Jefferson, he said, I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Meaning he knows that the Second Amendment is going to cause some danger. The constitutional rights granted by the Constitution are going to create dangerous situations but it's better than being enslaved like most European countries. And you can say, well, they're not enslaved. They are enslaved. They are completely bound to the rules of the people who govern. They have no means to fight against that. And a lot of people live under rules they don't like, and they have nothing they can do about it. So uh, it may not be the uh, most precise definition of slavery, but it's one that I prescribe to. Uh, also, it's very clear that the Founding Fathers knew that sometimes people being armed will be the benefit of the people. They won't be victims. If you look at a quote here by Thomas Jefferson, the law that forbid the carrying of arms are laws of such a nature they disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crimes. Such laws make things worse for the assaulted and better for the assailants. They serve rather to encourage than to prevent homicides, for an unarmed man may be attacked with greater confidence than the armed man. There's Thomas Jefferson, one of the founders, saying, one of the reasons for the Second Amendment is so that you can carry your gun and be safe. Because bad guys don't follow laws when there's laws that say you can't carry guns or own guns. So all that does is turn law-abiding citizens into easier targets for criminals. And not only that, he's specifically stating there the importance, <clears throat> excuse me, the importance of the individual right of a person to carry a gun for self-defense. Not in their house, not anything. He's saying it's important that every citizen be allowed to arm themselves and carry their gun so that they are not an easy target, so that they are not a victim to people who break laws. So that right there pretty much destroys their whole argument that it's only for the militia or that it's just for uh, safety of the country and it's not got anything to do with individual rights or they didn't foresee the dangers to people. They did foresee that there would be dangers and they said that they're worth it. But they also saw that an individual armed person is safer than a disarmed person. So blows their argument apart. And as far as them not being able to foresee the level of weapons we have, like I said, ridiculous and in fact, they made statements regarding how, well, when circumstances change and you go back and look at the Constitution, should you judge it on the circumstances at the time or the intent of the Constitution? Because they knew things were going to change. They weren't idiots. They were seeing changes. They were seeing great advancements. You got to remember, this is when science was starting to move quickly. Technology was starting to move quickly. They knew there were going to be advancements. And uh, Thomas Jefferson dealt with that specifically in a statement. He said, on every occasion of constitutional interpretation, let us carry ourselves back to the time when the Constitution was adopted. Recollect the spirit manifested in the debates, and instead of trying to force the meaning, uh, what meaning may be squeezed out of the text or invented against it, instead let us conform to the probable one for which it was passed, or in which it was passed. In other words, he's saying, when situations change, don't try to uh, reinterpret the Constitution to suit the times. Go back to when it was passed and deal with the original meaning, which the original meaning was clearly all people have the right to carry arms and, uh, and keep arms. And then if you need to amend the Constitution, you can amend the Constitution. But until you do, you go back to the original meaning. You deal with what it meant at the time. They've made it very clear what it meant at the time. It meant that all people, because the militia is all people, shall not be regulated by the government in what arms they keep or what they carry. 
They made it very clear that they believe every individual has the right to carry a firearm on them for self-defense so that they are not defenseless victims for criminals. They made it very clear that anti-gun laws don't work. They made it very clear that you don't get to choose which people get to have guns and which one don't. If they're a free person, which was clearly stated, they get to keep and bear arms. So if you run into one of these people who wants to argue with you about what the Second Amendment means, don't shy away from them. Don't feel like you can't argue with them. Just do a little research. Look around. There's so much information out there. And when people say it's really vague what they meant in the Constitution, it isn't. The Second Amendment is not vague, period. They use very common terminology of the time. They use it very clearly that because the people need to be able to come together as a unified fighting force and maintain power for themselves, which is what they mean by a well-regulated militia, which they make clear in their statements later, that the government should have no say in what free people keep as far as arms is concerned, what they carry. You should be able to have anything you have. Now, believe me, they foresaw dangers like, what if billionaires buy bombs and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a risk of free society, unfortunately. Most people who are billionaires have got no reason to blow up the people that are making them rich or give people a reason to attack them. So not likely to happen. You can create fantasy scenarios that are scary to justify the removal of, the removal of every right, but that doesn't make it okay. And like the founders made it clear, it's for every person. It's not just for in service to the government. It's for personal protection. It's for being able to come together in opposition to your government. It is, you should be able to carry it outside your homes and protect yourself so that you're not victims of criminals. And that when it comes time to look back to the second amendment and interpret the second amendment, there's no interpretation needed. You just go by the original meaning of the document. So none of the arguments they have make any sense. In fact, most of the arguments they make work better against the First Amendment than they do the Second Amendment. So always ask them, are you against the First Amendment when you start this argument? And then hit them with facts. Now the facts aren't gonna convince them because most of them are already aware of the facts, but there are some that just aren't. So never give up before the conversation's had. Always have the conversation first before you decide the person you're talking to is a partisan moron. Always give it a chance first. But once you realize facts aren't going to sway them, well, then move on to another person because that person isn't ready to accept the truth. But always arm yourself with the truth. Don't lead off with things like, shall I be infringed from my cold dead hands when the, when the Civil War comes? You know, those kind of things don't win over anybody. Just use facts. Use history and use intent. The intent of the Founding Fathers the way they originally writ wrote the Second Amendment, how important the Constitution is to our for free society, and what it's very clear that the Constitution says when it comes to keeping and bearing arms. All right, everybody, I rambled on far too long there. I could have said all that probably in five minutes, but you know, that's not my style. But uh, I want to thank everybody who actually stayed with me through it. I hope it's useful to you. And I want to say thanks for tuning in. I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I'll sign off by saying, as usual, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, you know, it is what it is. But what it will be in the future, if we keep our wits about us and we fight smart and hard and ignore the profiteers and the fear mongers, what things will be in this country for those of us that are freedom-minded in the very near future is better. <laughs>